Hello everyone. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time and it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I typically work on projects from beginning to end. However, today is Finish It Friday. And that is the first Friday of every month. I stop everything that we're working on and I grab a project that has just been sitting around or is unfinished or something that just needs to happen. So uh, tonight we are going to do, we are going to attempt, I should say, some mending. Uh, <laughs> I have my husband's overly mended sweatshirt. So first of all, it's weird a little bit to mend a sweatshirt Anyway, but this one is almost comically mended. I have mended it like a million times before. So here's, here, I should just show you guys. So here is the front. It has all these little mends in. We have some uh, little woven mending. And let's see what else. I think we have this side is mended as well. We got an itty bitty mend there. And uh, we have some elbow patches. Look, they're coming apart. So this is what, what I need to do a mend on today. It is so gross. Oh, look here. Here's some mending on the side. It's just horrible. <laughs> but he likes wearing it and it's just, it gets weirder and weirder the more I mend it. So we're going to mend it some more tonight. So I'm going to flip you around. We'll do some woven mending. Uh, and I'm going to use just some fun green yarn for it too. And we'll see how that goes. It's just going to be silly. Hopefully, hopefully we can patch up another hole. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to flip you guys around. Let's get started. Yep, there's my scraps from yesterday. All right, here we are, guys. Yes, happy Friday! Thanks for joining me again, you guys. So here, let's take a closer look at this craziness. So he wears this all the time. I actually, he was wearing it today and I got it off him to wear, to um, do this Finish It Friday. Look, I got all this to patch. I, I'm not, I'm probably not going to do that. Uh, but, you know, there was some pretty good holes going here. This is like definitely felted over time. Um, this one has two a little bit, but you can kind of see the woven uh, yarn there. Let's see where else. Okay, so this is the other. This is the other arm. This is the side that I won't be doing. But but I made. I actually wove. Um, I did this patch separately. So I did that. I had a piece of cardboard that was a circle or like an oval and I wove on that oval and then I sewed the elbow patch on. So those are done a little bit differently. And then that got a hole. So we, we mended that a little bit. That's kind of what we'll be doing tonight. Here's another um, a little bit of mending. It looks like I have to do this part here. I've already done that a little bit. I just uh, did some crisscrossing of some thread to sew that up. <laughs> this is just insane. Look, I did a little bit there, but look, it's coming apart. What else do we got? The back's fine. <laughs> and then here's this side. This side too, I had to do some mending and some little bits there. And this is the side I'm going to attempt to putz around with tonight. Ooh, we got a hole happening here too. Oh, Shirley just loves this sweater too much. I don't, I'm not sure I'd be able to replace it. And it's funny because people ask him about it now, like, oh, where did you get that with all those funny patches? But look, this one's, this one's looking pretty, pretty harsh here. So really, um, so here's another one of those oval patches that I made. But there are, I mean, this is the hole I wanted to deal with today. But look how thin um, this is as well. I can kind of reinforce that with stitches. Um, in theory, I should kind of make a patch for this whole, whole arm here, but I think all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and patch up this hole here. We got this down here too. I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave this, oh, it goes, goes around. I might just kind of wrap around that a few times to close that up, but I think I'm going to try and, uh, 
cover this hole. I might have to use a lot of yarn for that, and then I might just try and reinforce this by putting um, some some extra stitching in. Now that's kind of a lot for tonight. Mending actually takes a long time to do. All this weaving um, takes a while. So let's let's just give it a go. I just happened to find this green yarn um, quickly, so <laughs> we're gonna use some crazy green yarn. I just kind of got a bit off of here. I'm going to thread it. I'm I'm using. Um, this doll needle, which is really, really a long needle here. Oh, sorry about the band-aid too, you guys. I cut my, scraped some skin today, so that's got to stay on there. Gosh, with how weak this is, I'm not even sure how to really approach this. I think, let's, let's go horizontally. Like, let's go back and forth this way. And then I'll work vertically after that, I think. So let's see. I'm going to start on, on this actual patch. I'm going to treat the patch as if it's part of the fabric. So what I want to do is just go back and forth a little bit above where we're going to start. And then I'm going to just keep going back and forth. And as I reach this hole, I'm going to jump over it. And, you know, it, this is a, a, like a kind of a tightly knit... Uh, fabric so it's not going to be the easiest to stitch through especially with a big needle and big yarn but you know we're doing what we can do here <laughs> so all right I'm going to just start like right here I'm going to just do some running stitches and these extra stitches in theory should help reinforce um, the rest of the fabric too although with how crazy this is, I'm not quite sure it's going to do much. Oh man, I might need like a little th leather thimble to help me out here or something. I don't think I have one of those on hand. This might be a total bust too, you guys. We'll see. This is a, um, I, I saw the hole on his shirt when he was wearing it. I'm like, oh, I'll repair that for you. And then when I actually held it in my hands, uh, it was a lot more going on with this hole than I thought. Like it's just really thin fabric here. He must, um, he must kind of just, this must be like his mouse arm that he uses his computer mouse with. I'm just leaving a little bit dangle here on the end here. I'm going to get up a little higher for you guys. I'm going to leave this part dangle. I'll get a little bit more I'll, I'll tuck this in on the end, but I'm, I'm leaving it on the front right now just to kind of keep my eye on it. So this is kind of where I'm going to start jumping back and forth a little bit. The hole kind of starts right here. So I'm going to jump to solid ground again. It will weave in and out in solid ground for a little bit. Oh, it's just it's just sweatshirt material. It is not a sweater. It's just literally like a knit sweatshirt. So not something one would usually mend like this, but um, <laughs> it's kind of what we're doing with this sweater now. All right, so I'm going to leap over across again. What I'm kind of doing is getting... Uh, kind of the first lines, like the the weft, I think is what it's called, for, for weaving. So I'm just kind of crisscrossing over the hole, kind of creating these big, like, gaps. So here we go. So you can kind of start seeing we have these bigger, um, bigger pieces here. This is what I'm going to weave into later. Oh, my mom says that my grandmother did this to socks. <laughs> did she do this to like knit socks like this or like knit socks that, you know, a person actually knitted? Cause, <laughs> cause this is just seems silly, but you know, is it really silly? Uh, because you know, if it wasn't for me doing this, I'm not sure he'd wear this sweatshirt anymore. So I think it's kind of worth it. It's a sweatshirt that he really likes. He was upset that he had to take it off for me to, to work on it tonight. 
I want to um, get far enough tonight so I can show you guys the other the other direction. I know I need a darning egg. I'm afraid that a darning egg isn't even going to be big enough for this. So what a darning egg is, it's like a little wooden, I don't actually have one. I, I, I want one. Um, it's, it's like an egg shape wooden um, piece. And, uh, um, you know, I'm thinking I actually do have fake eggs that are wooden that my husband had to buy for a project. I wonder if I should go get those. But I think this hole is kind of too big for that. So I'm just going to jump back and forth. But yeah, having like a little base to work on um, is, is helpful for this. I'm not sure I'd have, I'd have to get something bigger than a, than an egg. Here, how about, how about a jar of pins? Let's throw that in here. So this, this in theory should help this keep its shape a little bit so I can jump back and forth. But I'm a little worried that I won't, I'm going to want my hand in there a little bit more that I can do with this, but we'll see. So there I can kind of jump back and forth and keep, keep the shape of, of the thing. And then I can actually use it as kind of a base for my stitches. So yeah, I think this will work. Yeah, a little, a little too big of a hole for, for a darning egg, but I think this, this just ball jar here is going to do the trick. And I'm not really matching up my yarn to fabric really well. Um, you know, like I said, this is a thin, like a really tightly little knit fabric. And I'm using this big honking yarn with it and a big needle when I probably should be using super thin thread and doing really itty bitty stitches and stuff. That's not how I'm doing this. I have precedent for the rest of this, rest of the um, quilt, or rest of the sweatshirt of doing it like this. Oh man, come on, there we go. This is my first color though. I, I did the black, to, I think this is the first thing I did was the elbows and I made those patches. So that was kind of fun. That was a different way of doing it. Like I said, I, I, wove, I wove this separately and then sewed it on after. It's different than how I'm doing this now. Ooh, this, this goes way over here. So I'm gonna stitch these zigzags. I'm gonna stitch way over here. Cause look, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it is, it is like down to just threads there. So let's jump across. I think I'm still actually in in this patch a little bit so the next bit so I'm gonna go all the way out to here so I can cover this weak area with some stitches so I think the idea with darning is you know you do this jump over the holes and then you weave that later but all the weak spots you can just kind of do what I'm doing here Ooh, I'm making a mess um, the weave back and forth through it, and that will um, that will help strengthen it, strengthen it a little bit. I think this jar is actually helping. It's helping me keep these all even. Uh, it's not really running like a stocking. It is just threadbare. It is just you know, as if sandpaper <laughs> had been going on it for, you know, three days. All right, yep, yeah, I think that's as far as I can go. So, yeah, like if you look really close here, I don't know if you guys can tell, it's tough with the black. But look how fun this looks, it already looks kind of neat. <laughs> this green is going to be kind of fun. I just keep rotating it back and forth because it's easier for me to pull with this hand. Come on. There we go. Now we'll go back this way again. He's going to want to wear this, so I'm going to have to finish it to some extent tonight, I think. But I got to get past this hole at least. It's not as worn on this side, so I'm going to do, just do a couple stitches there. 
He has other sweatshirts, but this is the one he likes wearing. All right, let's see if I can stay on the same side. Ooh, but then I'm doing a running stitch with my left hand. That's a little difficult. cute though it's gonna be cute all right again this side I'm gonna go a little farther with the running stitch just to get this kind of weak area woven a little bit more there we go it's comfy cozy exactly oh yeah Jane so Jane it is it's finish it Friday so on, on the first Friday of every month, so it's the first Friday of December, right? It is, isn't it? I'm not missing a day. Yeah. Um, is it though? Was last week? No, this is the first week. It's the seventh. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, I didn't miss it on the first, did I? No. Um, but the first Friday of every month, I stop everything else I'm doing and uh, I, I break out something else that needs to get done. Something that's kind of like on the list. Oh, you want to remove sleeves from a short sleeve sweatshirt? Oh, and knit sleeves on. Ooh, Arloa, that is a fun idea. Ooh, I love that idea. I bet you that looks, that'll look super duper cute. Love it. Knitting has been um, popping out at me again as like, I need to start, start a knitting project. Okay, this, this, um, having this jar underneath is really, really helpful actually. So, good call you guys. Oh man, I really could... I really could weave over all of this. It's so worn, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do the hole and then I'm gonna go down to like maybe here because there's another little hole, hole starting. I think I'm kind of sucking this in a little as I go, but that's probably okay because I'm guessing this is pretty stretched out. I thought, why not use a bright, fun color this time? I did black and, and gray for the rest of this. Oh, we'll try to keep going this way. I'm gonna jump way over to here. But yeah, just stretchy knit fabrics like this can sometimes be just a little bit difficult to pull needles through and Oop, that one got a little tight there we go I want to try and make all these kind of the same the same kind of uh, tension wise oh <laughs> should we get a lottery going on how long this lasts yeah I mean it's looking pretty sad <laughs> it'll last until he finds a Sweater that he likes better. <laughs> That's probably. Oh, Irene, you're crocheting tonight. I still have my crocheted doily that I that I started. Um, I, I don't think I've worked on it since I showed it to you guys. So I don't know. That must serve. That must have served a purpose. I must have needed to do some doily crocheting in that in whatever moment I was in. Because now I'm not. I'm not feeling as. You know, well, actually, I, I would love to work on it some more, but I'm not being summoned to it, I suppose, like I was earlier. Okay, we're almost past this hole. <laughs> we have this giant, giant hole down here, too. Oh, you're working on a Christmas for your daughter. That was for last Christmas. Nice. <laughs> All right, we're almost to the bottom here. We just have like this little bump out hole. I think I'll try and just kind of weave 
in a little bit more than it's very very weak fabric but I want to um, get in a little further so you guys I, I was on mass drop and I wonder if any of you knitters have any thoughts on this. So they have right now some, oh gosh, I forget what it's even, who they're even by, the company. But they're those um, needles. They're those square knitting needles. Um, and they're the ones with, uh, that you can change the cables on them. So you can have all different length cables and then you can re you can put whatever size needle you want on and it comes with a whole pile of sizes of needles and stuff. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Um, oh, Bonnie says that Mass Drop has the wool mats again. Ooh, the wool pressing mats. So that would be a good time to go over there and get, grab one of those. But do you know what I'm talking about with those... Um, needles where it just comes with all the different size of needles and you can put whatever cable you want on, on. Um, I'm tempted to get those but they are expensive so they'll be like totally <laughs> just a gift for myself for no reason um, and uh, I was wondering I was looking at reviews on them and it, there was kind of like some mixed reviews. Like people thought it was hard to get the cables off of them and stuff. But but I don't know. If any of you guys have used used that with the the cables that you can replace or like that you can you just have the sticks or the the um the needles and then you put whatever size cable you want on. Like it has a little click mechanism to do that. You like the square and round. So the square, I think I've gosh, I think I've knit on square needles once. But I might have just seen them and not actually knit on them. I think I might have just seen them and w was like, oh, that's neat. But supposedly with square needles, it's supposed to like ergonomically be um, easier on your hands and stuff. I'm not quite sure why. But I'm tempted to just get them just because. <laughs> I deserve a Christmas present for myself. Uh, oh, so that's all you use. So Robin, you use where it has that click mechanism and they're those square needles. I forget the brand, but it's on, they're on mass drop right now. And, um, I want them. <laughs> you do like this, Sandra, you like the square needles? Yeah. So do you find them more ergonomically like good? I, I mean, from what I've heard, people are like, Oh, I like the square needles. I don't, my hands don't cramp up anymore or, you know, I don't know. People seem to like the square needles or maybe it's like, I'm wondering if it's just, you know, like a placebo effect, like, Oh, I'm using this cool new thing and I like them. So the needles themselves are square. So the needles are actually still long like needles, but instead of them being like a round long cylinder, they're like a long square. Um, so if you cut them, like if you chop them in half, like a, like a, uh, like, you know, if you could, <laughs> then you'd have a little square. Like if you cross cut them, then they'd be square. Well, that's what I'm wondering, um, Gretchen, how well do they, does like thread slide off of them? All right, right here, you guys, I, I'm done with the hole. So now it's just really weak fabric. So I'm going to just kind of weave back and forth. Um, I think maybe till, so my thread runs out, but I'd like to get down to here and then I'll start weaving up and then we'll start doing the weaving of these actual pieces. I think, oh yeah, we got, we got lots of time to, to get that far. So let's just weave back and forth in here. Just get them. It's Christmas. I know that's, that's why I'm tempted. I don't even, I've just been, I've been talking a lot lately to some people about knitting. Like I just need to get I just want to start knitting again and I actually have a knitting project but I have needles for it already but I don't know I always thought they were cool yeah they're for circular knitting um I mean you can use them for circular knitting yeah they're, they're meant for circular knitting so you have it's like a you know it's the needle and then you put a cable on and then there's the other needle you don't have to do circular knitting with circular needles but um you know with just the sticks you can't really do circular knitting. So they're just more, they're just more flexible for more projects. Um, 
And the other neat thing about these particular ones that I want, um, they have they have lots of different cable sizes. I, well, I think like three different cable sizes, but some are um, not loose. That's not the word. But or some are like more flexible. And then some are less flexible. So I don't know. I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> I don't know. It's totally a splurge. But anyway, I was wondering if any of you guys like them. Oh, you got one because of arthritis in your hands. Oh, you like them, but they really haven't used them enough to tell if there's like really something going on with them. Use circular needles for everything. I do too, Robin. Once I started using circular needles, I haven't used like just the sticks in a long time. Interchangeable needles are the best. Oh, it's all you use now, Tammy. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, every time I see them, I'm just always tempted by them, and now I just want them. <laughs> so I don't know. I'll have to let you guys know on Monday if I, I think there's only one day left on them or something. Maybe they're not even on anymore. Maybe I already missed them on Mass Drop. I'll have to check. I'll have to check tonight, but um, oh man, maybe I did miss them. Who knows? I'll have to see. I'll have to wait till next time if I miss them, but I'll let you know if I if I end up getting them, if they're still on. All right, now I'm just kind of weaving, but oh god, there's barely any threads here. I'm weaving into nothing. I'm gonna go until the threads look a little more solid, which isn't at all. We're gonna go way over here. Oh, poor little shirt. You bought yourself a featherweight Nolene. Ooh, fancy. Oh, you treated yourself to some, Tammy? You have the Shiagu brand. I'm not sure that's what these are. Shiagu. But you like the... Is that is that right? Shiagu? I, I haven't heard of those. But, you know, I'm not very super knowledgeable about all things knitting either. Featherweight. That sounds exciting. Fancy new machine. How fun. I have not seen a featherweight in person before. So I'm just curious, are they like actually just a lot smaller than a normal sized Singer machine? Is that why everyone likes them? They're just like a bite sized powerhouse machine? <laughs> They always look so cute, but I, I don't have any, like, relation to how big they are. How are we doing over here? Eh, we're getting a little stronger, maybe, with our threads. I'm going to stop it. Well, we'll go. There's this seam here that's kind of hard to stitch through. I'm just going to kind of jump over it. Ooh, nice, Lucy. I bet you someone will snag it right up. Those are popular. Ooh, it will be here Monday. They are small. You'll post photos. Awesome! Can't wait to see, Nolene. Fun. All right, let's see. Oh, gosh, I could just continue down here, couldn't I? Um, well, first of all, I think I'm going to just stop here with this thread because I'm almost out of thread. I'm going to leave... I'm going to leave my threads on the outside for now just so I can see them so I can like kind of manage them a little bit better. I'm going to cut this a little shorter. Um, but man, okay, how far do I want to go on this? I mean, it's thin all the way up to the giant hole in the cuff. I don't know if I want to deal with all that though. I think I'll keep going back and forth till about here because there is another small hole right here. So I'll keep going to here and then I'll go up and down and up and down. And then I think I'm gonna just treat this a different time. I'm gonna do this hole a different time and treat it as a whole nother patch. So maybe even using different yarn. But I think this, I'm only gonna to go to here, although I hope that doesn't even hurt this thread even more. But if it does, then I'll just have to make a bigger patch here later, I guess. But for now, let's grab some more yarn here. Boop. Ooh, you're sewing on a featherweight right now, Robin. Ooh, are the are two 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 featherweights like extra special? 
Oh, collage brand. Okay, that's what it is, Gina. Okay, yeah. So it's the collage. Thanks for checking. So I have four more days <laughs> to to decide if I want those knitting needles, and it's the collage brand. And and the reviews I read, like some people love them, and some people like hated them. I think they swivel, which I don't think all um, detachable cables do and I thought that was kind of cool but some people said that the the mechanism to take the needles on and off was kind of difficult but I don't know I watched a video and it didn't look too hard but who knows I don't know I suppose it's just yeah you give it a go and if you end up not liking them then oh well it happens so we'll see I'll let you guys know if I get them. The swivel is the best. Okay, that's good to know. The 222 has, oh, a removable arm. Oh, and you can drop the feed dogs on them too. Ooh, that means you can do free motion quilting with of that feather weight. That's kind of fun. Why don't you just sew the cuff hole with thread instead of darning it? I could, that's true. I could just, um, turn this inside out and so maybe that is what I'll do that makes sense oh gosh I don't know if I can though it is a hole it's not just it's not just the cuff coming off look at this it's it's um here here's here's the cuff hole so it actually extends up this seam a little bit so soon I, we're just gonna have a side seam and a cuff <laughs> so yeah maybe I could and and this is so weak um, like this is just threadbare knit too, so gosh, I don't know. Here, here I just stitched up the hole with like I did a, a herringbone stitch just to, I don't know. It's a mess. This like I literally could crochet a whole arm band on this, and I think that would probably be the strongest, best thing to do. But I think you're right. I think just sewing that on might be a good idea. It would get it on for now. Oh yeah, look at this is this is running almost right here. Jump across there. Hopefully this is reinforcing it and not just making bigger holes, which because I'm using bigger thread, it might be just I might be making this whole thing worse by doing this, but it'll it'll be protected for a little bit. I think All right, yeah, I'm covering up a hole that's right here, too. We'll get there. We'll go the other direction soon. And again, I'm just kind of leaping over this seam a little bit because it's hard to stitch through. And then adding a few more stitches just to get to stronger ground. Like this, this is like perfect fabric over here. It's not worn at all. Oh, yes, this is my, my husband's sweatshirt sleeve, which is a little silly, but I have been uh, um, darning this. Like, here's some more darning. I've been darning this, uh, patching it up. This whole thing is a patch here um, for ages, and he, he just keeps wearing it. <laughs> so I keep on fixing it. Right now, it's just almost, almost just a joke. <laughs> he likes wearing it just because it is just so silly. All right, I need to, I'm going around the curve here, so I need to get this through first. Oh, what the heck did he do? He wears it a lot, Jane. That's that's what he did do it. And he wears it when he's doing kind of like work type stuff, like, you know, if he had to like fix something or, you know, workshop something or work outside, work in the yard, you know, stuff that might do stuff that might ruin a sweatshirt. That's what he wears this for. And then he just wears it all winter because it's cold. <laughs> Green needles. You wouldn't want them too easy to change. Otherwise, they would come off when you're knitting. See, that's what I think, Noeline. So that's, I don't know. I thought it looked like a neat kind of secure way of doing the needles. And, you know, and, and some of you guys said you like the square. And I've heard people like, like the square needles. So I don't know. Maybe I should just jump in and do it. I might. 
And and one thing I hate is that every time I start a new knitting project, I have to buy new freaking needles, right? Um, so like the typical thing is like, ooh, you find a cute project or you find a neat um, pattern or whatever when you're knitting, but you need like the exact, you need, you need a size 10 needle that has a 24 inch cable or, you know, I'm just, it's something that of course you don't have or you can't find anywhere and it's annoying and it sucks buying, like I hate buying new needles. Um, they don't come in, or mine don't come in bamboo, uh, mom, but I have seen other ones. So there are other brands that do come in bamboo. Actually, I think this brand might, but they're like an add-on thing. So these are actually metal, and that's the other thing. I'm not sure if I would like, like the metal. But I do like bamboo ones, so I don't know. Yeah, you never have the right size needle. Yours has a T pin to tighten the cables on the needles. Your cables are thin. Usually, oh, you usually miss you usually miss the the first Friday or the um finish it Friday. All right, I think this is about as far as we're gonna go here. I mean, it's weak. It's like I can see through it all the way to here, but we're gonna just we're gonna just stop. So I'm gonna go to the end of this row. Yeah, we're gonna go to about right there, I think. And now I'm gonna start going up and down. Okay. So I went a little farther over here because again, I'm trying to reinforce this area and same with over here, I'm trying to reinforce this area. So typically when I do this, I should go maybe a little farther. Um, I go up and down through all this too, these sides, but we're just gonna go, yeah, I don't know. We'll do one edge where we go up. We'll see how this goes. All right, I'm gonna head up this way. So same, same thing. We're just kind of reinforcing it again. We're getting our little side reinforcements, but now I'm going vertical, so the opposite direction of what we just did. And that's why I kind of like the long needle. Again, I'm using like a doll, I think these are called doll needles. They're used, or doll making needles. They're like, you know, to sew on eyes on a doll, and then after you sew in the eye, you can have the long needle to come out like the backside of the doll head or something. Katie, we are mending. I am uh, doing some woven, I'm sure this is called something, but like I'm calling it woven mending on my husband's old sweatshirt. <laughs> so something that I think anyone else would probably not <laughs> mend, but I've mended it so many times. Like I'm, I'm actually mending into mending, if you can see. Um, this is, this is a, a patch that I made right here for the elbow because the elbow had holes in ages ago and now I'm making a patch that's coming off of the patch. All right, I think we need to go, yeah, I guess we'll start going down. So I'm just kind of zigzagging down again or back and forth down again. And as I approach, you know, these, these, part these longer ones I will weave those instead of going um, just a running stitch like I am now gotta switch hands again so I can pull this through you have a bunch of different knitting needles yeah I should just gather them all again but it would be nice to have just the interchangeable ones and them all in one place And this was just that seam, so I don't need to really reinforce that. So I'm gonna just start going up again here. All right, I think we're gonna get some, some weaving in here a little bit. Actually, you know what? I should have maybe started in the middle for the weaving, but we're just gonna figure it out.
I guess we're kind of not at the weaving part quite yet. Ooh, I gotta pull that through. I have never knit socks before. Um, I think uh, I think they're just itchy. Like I, I haven't all that kind of yarn stuff and wool stuff is kind of itchy on me. So come on, needle. There we go. So I don't know. I never got into socks. I did knit slippers. So and I always it's like that that I have to knit two of something irks me a little bit. I just want to do it once and be done, but, you know, I have knit fingerless gloves and I have knit um, slippers before, so maybe that idea doesn't hold. <laughs> cotton blend. Yeah, I should, I should look. Look to see what's out there these days. I know sock yarn is so neat, like the kind that just automatically um, goes in like stripes and designs. Merino and cashmere yarn dips are your favorite. See, it's the merino that I'm a little afraid of would be a little itchy. All right, so right now I, I'm not gonna stitch into the fabric anymore I'm just going to weave so I'm going to start here I'm going to go under and over and under and over and under and then I ran out so then I'm going to just stitch again there we go so this is our first woven area and we may have to fiddle with it a little bit. There we go. All right, let's come back up. So now this one we would go over, so I'm gonna come out right here. It's kind of tight right here. I think we're in that seam. It'll be good to get past that. Okay, there we go. The reason I chose some big yarn to do this too is because it'll go faster. I've mended my own little, little, um, little, um, repairs and stuff, uh, with, with embroidery floss before and even the smallest hole just takes ages to do. So I thought this would be a little bit easier under. So I'm just doing the opposite of what I just did. Um, so where I went under, I'm now going over. There we go. There's nothing to stitch through anymore because um, there's that, there, that hole. And you know, after this washes a few times, it's all gonna come, come together too. So I do have some pretty big spaces in here, but I'm not horribly worried and you know, the sweatshirt is pretty jacked anyway, so whatever I do isn't gonna, you know, matter much. All right, next weaving part. So again, I'm gonna go opposite of what I just did. So this one I went under, so I'm gonna go over and under and over and under, over, under, over. Under, over, and then back and forth again. Ooh, and now this one I'm gonna go all the way down because I got, I have this little mini hole down here to do too. So I gotta get that. You can kind of futz it in place, but there, we're starting to get a little weave going there. All right, but yeah, I'm gonna come down 
here a little farther and get get this little hole going here. <laughs> this is such a mess. <clears throat> Alright, I'm going to go over and under these two and get back up to where we left off again here. What did I do last time? So this one over I think I have to go over that one. Oh, I can't pull that direction. Okay, over, under, over, under. I'm just kind of pushing it up too as I go. Under, over, under, over, under. Then I'll go over here and up the hair. Filling in that hole. Ugh, that gap. There. Cute. I don't know what the hubs will think. Uh, Gretchen, I think he'll just go with it. At this point, he's just going with <laughs> this crazy, crazy sweatshirt. He wears it still. I think he likes it. Okay, this one has to go under. So this one I'm going to go over. Let's pull this through first. It's starting to look, it's starting to look like something, though, a little bit. And I mean, you know, I used, typically I think, unless you're doing, like if, if, you're, if you're trying to do like old school mending, I'm sure you'd try and pick a thread color that's probably the, as the similar as you can and, and uh, all that. But we're doing decorative mending here, so <laughs> we're going out there with the color not being the same. All right, let's pull it through first. Yeah, and again, this is, I think this is kind of like a little, I think this is a, a wool, I think this will shrink just a hair, which is good because it'll kind of, um, actually, I hope this is a wool. Um, it will kind of hold everything together a little bit better if it does shrink. So I'm weaving that tiny hole here and I'm actually kind of getting down a little further to hopefully reinforce this area some more down here. Ooh, I don't know if we'll get this done tonight. I'll at least finish this thread. Ooh, I better just sit and get it done. Maybe I'll, um, so well, that's, this is what I love about Finish It Friday though. Um, is because it always gets me started on a project, something that I probably normally wouldn't have ever picked up again or decided to work on. Um, and now I think I might just, after we're done here, I might just try and finish this up because I'm, af I'm afraid to let it be. Normally I would just let this project be unfinished, but he's going to want to wear this like tomorrow. <laughs> He's going to want to wear it like immediately after it's done. So I better get it done tonight. <laughs> at least, at least this all, um, like I said, there's a whole pile of other holes in here, but this is the, this is the most immediate, immediate, um, repair needed on this, this sweater, this sweatshirt. Are the square needles looking at aluminum? Yeah, I think they're aluminum. So lightweight. So, okay, maybe... Or, or steel. I don't know. What are, what are, what are metal needles usually? I'm guessing aluminum, right? Yeah, then they'd be light. I never thought about that, but you're right. They would be light. 
that's a good thing. Especially for like such a repetitive task as knitting is. I'll take a look at them again. But I've been I've been itching to start up another knitting project and and um man, it'd be fun to play with new needles too. Needles where I, I won't have to buy new needles after it. That's what I like about it. And I wonder, actually, I, I might look up to see if they have other, like, attachments that you can get later. Because, like, you know, maybe I want a, uh, you know, really short cable at some point. I wonder if you can buy extra accessories like shorter cables or longer cables or different sizes. Or maybe you can get bamboo ones. Um you know, as added on features to the system. That would be kind of cool. I'll have to look. Maybe that'll put me over the edge of actually buying them. Down up, down up. And I wouldn't get them till January anyway. I think that's when, when they ship. So it'd be a little while yet to actually use them. Maybe by then I'll have a, I'll be able to actually start knitting something. <laughs> the bamboo took Kumi circular ones look great. We'll have to look at those. You're not a knitter, knitter, but... Yep, different projects require different size needles. Yeah, exactly, and that's what I hate about starting new knitting projects is I always have to buy needles to match because I never have, you know, the perfect exact combination of length of cable and size of needle and blah blah, so it always takes forever. Hey, this is coming together though! Check that weave out. So we're we're getting there. I'm almost out of yarn again. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going on this just to finish up this last little area. That won't take too long. And then I'm going to just um, probably bring these threads to the back. I'll turn this inside out and bring these to the back and just kind of weave them in. I think that's all that I'll do with the ends. And I think this is going to be the last bit to stitch up this hole down here that little mini hole. So we have like a little mini weave going right there. I like bamboo need needles too, Arlo. That's why I'm not quite, I'm not quite sure I'm gonna like these metal ones, but I might just try and see if I like them. Little funsy, funsy gift for myself. <laughs> Cute. I like this. I like this green. I actually kind of like that the mending or that the that crisscross is extending way out here. I think that's kind of neat looking. With the vertical, it looks crazy over there. Okay, weaving this side again. Soon I will hit fabric on this side of the hole. I almost am. Frayed fabric ends. I'm going to still probably weave on top of those for a little. This jar underneath is totally, totally helping a ton. Ooh, this is kind of a big leap. I'll have to make sure to not leap so much when I come back down. Oh, I need to make a few more stitches up here. There. All right, I think this might be the last row that this thread is going to get. And then we'll probably call it a night. But I may keep going on this. So under, so I got to go over here, under, over. There, did it right. Uh, 
blender over. Oh yeah, all these little bits look like little pixels. <laughs> it's kind of fun. That fits. John's a computer guy. He'll like, he'll like the pixelated look. It does, it kind of looks like a pixelated circle, like a low resolution <laughs> um, circle. Okay, here I want to weave in and out a little bit. Oh, can I get up again? I think I might go up to the top again. I think we'll just make it there. You can kind of shuffle the threads over as you need to. Okay, under. We'll pull that through first. A <laughs> sweater of many colors, exactly. As long as those colors are black and gray and green. <laughs> this is the first, first uh, new color to this. So this part is still covering the hole, but towards the end, they're getting um, more on a solid ground. Okay, so I'm going to end this thread. I'm just going to let it be. Oh, I might just try and finish this here, you guys. If you don't mind sticking with me for a little longer, I think I'm going to get another piece of thread and just finish this off. It's just, I have like maybe four rows right there or something, hardly any, and then I just have to tuck these in. Oh, I don't want to stop it now. So we're going to just stay a little longer tonight. All right. We're on the edge of the original patch that I did here. Ooh, come on. There we go. I have that long thread there yet. <laughs> Thanksgiving. You're working on your oh your borrow quilt. Um that's fun with Blair. Is that, is that the quilt you're working on? With Blair from um, Wisecraft? I've been seeing photos of all those quilts and they're just looking so pretty. But yeah, those holidays get in the way of all the crafting, right? <laughs> Over under. All right, now I'm now I'm in sweatshirt again. I'll still have that uh, the the um, cuff problem, <laughs> giant hole in the cuff yet. But you're maybe I can just sew that up. That might be a, just a quick solution. It, it, it'll still have a hole but the big gaping hole will be gone. <laughs> he must be waiting on the other side. He did have to put on a, he was, he was a little upset that he had to put on a different sweatshirt while I did this. <laughs> All right, um, under, over. I have to say it out loud every time, make sure I'm doing it right. Under, over, under, over. Oh, 
just a few more rows. This actually went pretty fast. I mean, we've been doing this hole here for just over um, this patch area for over an hour already, and you know we're still not done. And it's just like this, this big, and I'm using really big yarn, so this is like the fastest it's gonna go. So it it's it takes its time, that's for sure. All right, I think we'll get it started here before weaving it. I could cut off the cuff and make a new one. I, th I did that with, um, I, I did the mending of that sweater that my mom knit, that I, my house sweater from, uh, for winter. I haven't had to wear that too much yet. Um, but that I did make a whole new, kind of like half of a cuff. I, I crocheted it and then crocheted it actually onto the, onto the, um, the sleeve. Cause that, that was eaten away, that one. Not literally, but it was worn quite away to not existing <laughs> more than a hole. All right, there's a few little more that I want to make sure that I get through here, and I want to get at least a row of just reinforcing little bits. But then I think we are we're just getting there. I wanna I wanna also um, weave in these ends. All right, here I just need to go over and under, and I think we're done with the weaving. Yay! So now I'm just doing like those little edging, reinforcing stitches again. Ooh, stab myself. Oh man, I could have used a leather thimble though to help me pull this needle through. Oh, there we go, sheesh. Oops, I need a, there we go. Make my thread shorter. Oh, thanks Robin! Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a patched hole, that's for sure, so that's good. It's no giant gapingness. So I think this is going to be my last row here. I'm going to have to yank it through again. And then I'll, I'll just flip this inside out. I'll, I'll bring all these threads to the back. And then I'll flip this inside out. And I'll try and tuck in those ends somehow. Come on. There we go. Sheesh, oof, that is not easy. With a wool sock or something, I wouldn't have that problem pulling pulling the thread through at all. I don't think it's just because I'm going through this this um uh this uh sweatshirt, but that's looking cool. I love how it just is an extension of the patch that was already there. But alright, I'm gonna let's take the the um jar out of here. There, so this is this is the hole that still exists. I gotta deal with that some other time. Ugh, yeah, we're gonna lose a cuff there soon. But I'm gonna just um, since I have this on the needle still, I'm gonna bring this thread to the back or to the inside, I should say. And actually, well, yeah, I'm gonna cut this off and I'll bring I'll bring all those threads back and then I'll tuck them all in at once. All right. Oh, look, I'm totally bent this needle too. Oh yes, yeah, so the I saw that too, Nolene. So the Schmetz needles are back um, on Mass Drop, and now they're the universal needles, which is what I usually use in my sewing machine. I got the Microtex ones. Um, so maybe I should have waited and got the universal ones, but the ones that I got seem to be working so far. But yeah, I'm really happy I got those 100 needles because I was running real, real low on machine needles. And, you know, I, I just am kind of like I was out. And, you know, now that I'm sewing a lot more, I'm going through needles 
a lot quicker, I think. Or I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be more diligent on changing them and I can actually tell a little bit more than I used to when they need changing and just because I'm, I sew more often and I can hear just the sounds that change and, and we've kind of looked at that too. Like if it's making that kerchunking noise then might be time to change a needle or if the tension just isn't quite right, it might be time to change the needle. That's been fixing the problem a lot of times. So I'm just making like one last stitch with all these to get them to the back, to the inside. And then I'm gonna flip this around and we'll tuck them in real quick and then, then we will be done. That's exciting. I, I was not sure I would finish this whole thing, especially after I saw after he took the sweater off, the sweatshirt off and I saw like just how threadbare it is and and it still is but like I said I, I'm gonna treat this as a whole like a second area that I need to patch but it's gonna be it's gonna be like this again down here so this whole arm like this much of this arm is basically a patch right now or will be once I finish oh gosh there's, look there's another hole there I'm gonna just look I'm gonna go I'm gonna just swoop around this hole we're gonna just close this hole. There, I'm gonna swoop around. <laughs> we'll put like a little cross stitch through there maybe. There, and now I'm gonna to go to the back. There's a hole up here too. They're just everywhere. But this is a gaping, gaping hole. All right, there we go. Now let's flip it right side out. Just enough to kind of weave in those ends. Ugh, I'm gonna have to do more than this though. There, you can see here's where that original hole was that I had to put that um that patch, that black patch on, that was the hole that I covered up there. Isn't that crazy? Uh, and then here's that second hole. Yeah, here's the back of the hole. So you can see everything that we re repaired. This is um, this is the area that we just patched up. So two two giant holes, and now I got another one down here. That's that's what I got to do next. But uh, <laughs> we got a little bit more done here. Frankensteining this back together. So I think I'm just gonna kind of weave back and forth in between this a little bit. Just kind of like how I do with the embroidery, just back and forth. I think that might be the best way. Again, I think once this gets washed a few times, these are just all gonna kind of merge into each other a little bit. I'm just trying to go in between the yarn and get get um capture as much yarn as I can and I always go three times the third time kind of locks it in place all right so we can snip that that's one yeah it's getting pretty good All right, second one, it's kind of a big jump here. Ooh, I maybe need to switch to a shorter needle now. Oh, I'm excited to see what this looks like. I'll, I'll um, zoom out too for you guys so you can see kind of like the effect of the whole sweatshirt again. I'll, I'll lay the sweatshirt down. I just got I have four more to do. So I'm trying to go fast to get this done. I know we went, we went a little late, uh, late today, but thanks for sticking with me. I'm happy I gotta get this guy done. He will be happy to not have a giant elbow hole. I'm thinking. I think this will be plenty. Right 
there. Okay. I haven't bought yarn in a while. That might be fun to do again too. I was on, um, I get the Pearl Soho newsletter. I might have already talked about this, but I don't know if you guys get the Pearl Soho. They're a, a store in New York City, and they just, um, they used to carry my embroidery kits. But um, they have just, like, newsletters, and they're all so pretty. And um, they had just a, a basket that they were selling. It was just a, a pretty basket, but full of yarn that they picked out. So you pick kind of a color, like kind of like, I want like burgundies. And they were just a whole pile of different weights of yarn, different fuzzinesses, and just a whole good plethora of um, different yarns that kind of had that color as a theme. And I was just thinking, man, knitting all those together in just a simple afghan, all the different um, types of yarn and textures of yarn would just be so pretty. And then you get that cute basket too. And uh, that would be a fun, simple, satisfying knitting project. But I gotta finish all these projects first, right? That's why I like this Finish It Friday. <laughs> get some of these things done. Oh, you're glad your husband's not seeing this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I do not do this often. <laughs> and this is the only thing of his I think I've, I've mended. I've mended, like I said, with embroidery floss, just tiny holes in, like, you know, my favorite tank top, like, just my favorite t-shirt or something. Um... That I don't want to get rid of but it has weird holes in so I'll do like some decorative mending like this. This is the last one here. I can get back one more time I think. Okay let's check it out. Again this will all kind of I think it's wool, so it all meld together. I'm going to get you guys up a little higher here. Oh, gosh, look at this gaping. This is the cuff. It's totally falling apart. Okay, so here is that arm now. There you can kind of, here's that original mend, and here's here's the new mend. This is, this was just, uh, like I said, this was this oval one that's all nice and perfect. Um, doesn't have these extra stitches. That was done separately, and then I stitched it on to cover a hole. This one, we are covering the hole as we went with the weaving, and then reinforcing it around. So it's fun. It's I think it's really decorative. Let me um lay this whole thing out so you guys can see all the mending again on this poor, horrible little, I mean, it's just like it's some cheap sweatshirt. It's just, it's all frayed everywhere. It's a lot more holes I could be patching up, but all right. So here, here we go. We have, um, on the front, this is what it looks like from the front. So we got, we got these holes by the pockets. And then we have this arm, which has been patched again. This is like what we just did with the green. Um, you know, we had this patch and then another hole came up there. Oh, look, I got, a, I got a hole here to do too. So this is the one arm. And then this is the arm that we, that we just did here. <laughs> so here's all, all the mending of his poor little sweatshirt here. But I think it's cute. I love the addition of the green. And this will, like I said, will bl start blending together, merging together, felting together um, in the wash like, like these two did. Um, but yeah, I like it. 
It's it's a little it's a little art piece that he likes wearing basically. So next time one of these days I'll have to address both cuffs here. They're almost like those um where you, those shirts that you can put your thumbs through the holes. I think that's kind of kind of um what it's like. But at least at least this area is taken care of. So awesome, you guys! I'm gonna flip you around here and we'll call it an evening. There, hello. So thank you for bearing with me a little bit for Finish It Friday. Here's here's the little patch right here from far away. Gosh, that's gonna just, it's like glow in the dark almost, isn't it? You can't see this black one at all. <laughs> but this one is just like, meow. Almost looks like a pixelated turtle, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, awesome. So thanks again. I hope you guys all have a fabulous weekend. I'm going to get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies if you wanted to see how to do a little mending repair. Uh, and then I'll be back Monday and we'll, I think we'll work on one of those splendid sampler blocks again on Monday. So it was fun hanging out with you again. That's, an, that's another Finish It Friday. <laughs> the next Finish It Friday is going to be in 2019, if you can believe that. <laughs> so, all right. This is the last, oh, this is the last Finish It Friday of the year. Oh, crazy. Okay, well, a good way to end it on working on something, something for somebody else. So that's good. <laughs> so have a great weekend, guys. And I will see you again on Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Good night!